Alright, this is Anarchist Programmer at Omnimaga.org. Um, we're going to be starting out the game making section. We'll be starting with simple games and working our way up to the more complex. Um, throughout this, I just want you to learn uh, how to put what we've learned all together to be able to make um, a little bit of extra entertainment throughout classes. Um, our, today's first segment will be a memory game. Um, we'll start out a new program and we'll call it Mem Game. <clears throat> Alright, as always, we'll start out with a clear home. Now, in a memory game, uh, you will need a score, which will determine to be S. And then we're going to need to have the number uh, to remember, and then um, another variable for guessing that number. Those will be uh, put in a little in just a second. We'll start out with label, so that we can come back to this beginning point whenever we need to. And uh, we'll add a random integer to find that number that we want. Um, for me, I'm going to have five digits, so it'll be um, 10,000 through 99,999, which means there'll be uh, five digits to remember and then type in afterwards. Now we're going to make this the number, which we'll classify as in, and um, now we'll have to display this. So we'll use output for uh, fanciness. The numbers that I've picked are from a little bit of experimentation. Um, you don't have to have the exact same positions as I do. Just uh, make sh just have a uh, have it however you want. Okay, so first we'll display that that uh, you have to remember something, and now we'll display the number that we had to remember. Now here's where I'll teach you something new. It's kind of like a repeat uh, function. It's called the for. Um, in this case, what it starts out is you pick a variable, you pick a starting number, and then you pick a uh, ending number. And what it'll do is it'll repeat everything in between um, the for and the end, in our case absolutely nothing, for uh, 150 times. So uh, every time it gets to the end, it'll add 1 to x, and then it'll go back up to 4 and go through the coding again. Um, we're doing this so we can have a timed pause. This way no one can sit there, write down the number, then hit enter, or spend their time like uh, remembering the number. So this way they have a limited number amount of time before um, they uh, it will clear the screen and they will have to uh, put in the new number. So to get their input, we'll use input. Um, so we'll want them to know that this is their guess. Uh, question mark. And we'll store this to G for guess. Now, afterwards, we'll clear home another time to get that off of there and make this a bit more fancy and we'll start off our if then so if g which is our guess equals n which is the number then obviously uh, it's correct so we'll have it display uh, correct Uh, also, because they got it right, we'll add 1 to their score. So we'll take whatever their score was before, which is S, add 1 to it, and then store that into S. Alright, and now we'll have it pause uh, so they can see, hey, I got it correct. And um, I'm not sure if I explained it before, and I think I did, but I could be wrong, but pause basically stops the program where it is until you hit enter. Um, so after that, we'll let them hit enter to get to it, uh, to go on, and we'll have it go to 
our label 1, which will start back with a new number and let us get, uh, guess again if we got it right. Now if we didn't get it right, which is where else comes in, we'll have it display that you got it, uh, that you got it wrong. Now um, I'm going to do something a little fancy here with the display. Um, you hit wrong. Now you can, uh, if you want to, you can end the quotation marks and hit comma, and that comma basically takes the place of another display. So it'll display wrong on the first line, then it'll display a blank space on our second line. Um, on the third line, it'll display final score, and then on our final uh, line will display what their score was. Once again, um, yeah, uh, from there we'll end it and um, we'll have it pause uh, where it displays all the score and finally we'll clear home. And this is pretty much the game. Uh, if you run it, you can see how it works. The program. Uh, if you saw, that was a bit r uh, too fast. Um, yeah, so obviously our pause didn't work out very uh, long enough. So we'll change the number from 150 to, say, 500. That should give us a bit more time. I'll try this one more time. And that time we could see things a lot better. And, and this next one I'll get wrong. The final score was 2. And that's basically our game. Um, as you can see, we've learned a couple new uh, functions. And we have this... Uh, made it a little interesting game. You can uh, make it more fancy by displaying stuff in different areas. You can uh, mess with how, uh, how many digits there are to make it more difficult. You can change how long it pauses. And um, I can show you a more advanced version of it later if you like. Um, so that basically ends our uh, first game. Um, congratulations. Uh, also, if you're wondering about the music in the background, I'm also a techno artist, and this is one of my uh, songs. So uh, check that out in the description, and uh, hope you join me for our next segment. We'll be learning a new, more complex game, and um, hopefully, yeah, we'll start having a lot more fun with this. Alright, and this is Anarchist Programmer, once again, signing off.